Hi, Chad from Balsa USA here, your friendly Balsa USA builder. Um, working on the next part to our landing gear project. Uh, that's going to be attaching the brass sleeve if you opt to do the brass sleeve method. Um, what that basically is, is it slides over the top of the axle and then uh, you have a, a cotter key that you'll drill a hole and you'll put through and twist it off and then that looks uh, a lot more scale than say a big uh, um, wheel collar that's on the end there. <laughs> so I'll go over some of the, the tools that we use. Um, you want to make sure you use your scotch brite pad. After you solder, you want to take and you want to re-clean the axle. Um, make sure you use the scotch brite pad and some mild dishwashing detergent. <clears throat> and then it, uh, it doesn't hurt to take a, a file and just file a little bit on. I already did this all the way around. Um, that'll give something for the solder to bite into a little bit more. Also, sometimes the brass tube won't slide on very good because there's a a little lip on the edge so if you just file a little chamfer on the end of the axle there that works good. To find out how long you want your axle you'll take your wheel that you're using depending if you're using the third scale, quarter scale, stuff like that um, and you'll put that on and you want this axle to end just inside of the wheel. Um, that's going to give you the most support but it'll still allow you to drill through the brass without having to drill through the uh, music wire here. And then you also have a, a washer. I'm using 730 seconds wire, so I'll use the quarter inch outside diameter brass tube. That slides over perfect. And then I'll use a quarter inch uh, washer that'll just slide over the end. And once I slide it all together, that'll give me a stop for the back side of my wheel. I'll put another one on the front, drill my hole for the cotter key, and that'll be what holds the wheel on. So the first step is to, uh, Take some of your flux, because uh, I don't like to use uh, flux core, rosin core solder. I like to use the Stay Bright uh, silver solder without any kind of rosin or anything in it. Um, and then we'll take and just brush that on. Get uh, Make sure you get it all covered with it. <clears throat> all the way around, get the end a little bit. What this flux does, it's actually an acid that uh, really cleans the the stuff once it heats up and allows the solder to stick a lot better uh, gets rid of all the impurities stuff like that so i'll take my washer i'll put it on the end of my brass tube and i'll slide it on and as i'm sliding it on i'm going to spin the brass tube and this gets the solder or the flux on the inside of the brass tube and it makes sure that it gets it all the way around All right, so I'm using a torch on this as opposed to the soldering iron. Um, now, if you use a torch instead of a soldering iron, you want to make sure that you look around your area because it's going to get hot elsewhere. You don't want any balsa wood if it's still attached to your airplane. Um, you don't want to start your airplane on fire. You don't want to start your workshop on fire. Wives tend to get a little upset about that. Um, so my area is nice and clear. I see that. Make sure that uh, you don't have your leg right underneath where hot solder is going to drip on your leg or, or your arm or whatever. That whatever's underneath isn't going to start on fire. So we'll just start it up and I'll uh, just start heating. And I'll slowly move it to heat it all evenly. And you can see it's going to start smoking. So you want to uh, make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area. And then just test it. Nope, it's not, uh, not ready yet. So I'll heat it up some more. I'll try her now. Nope, still not ready yet. And you, it may take a few times. Um, you don't want to get it uh, crazy hot. Um, now it's starting to melt. And it's going to follow the heat. So if you move your heat out, the solder is going to follow the heat as it melts in. So I'll melt a little in there, 
make sure it's tight. I'll stick it in this end over here and I'll melt some in there. Um, the advantage of, uh, of solder is it drills a lot easier. So if you do fill up a little bit more, it's not going to be a big deal. It'll fill, you'll be able to drill through it. Um, we'll let it cool a little bit. I'll grab a sponge. Um, letting it air cool is the best way because that's going to be the strongest. But just so that I can show you, I'll cool it down here. What happens when you cool it too fast is you actually crystallize the, the metal and, and it loses its strength on it. Um, so now, still a little warm. But you'll see that uh, you won't be able to, to pull it off. Um, it works the same way as uh, when you're soldering your plumbing pipes together. So then all you do is you'll slide your after it's all nice and cool, you'll slide your wheel on, um, slide your second washer on, and then find out where you have to drill for your, your cotter key. Um, you'll drill that hole, slide the assembly together, you can put the cotter key through, and you just bend the, uh, bend the ends over so that uh, it'll be something kind of like this, and it'll be through there. Um, it creates a real clean, nice looking uh, axle, and if for some reason it ever gets damaged, you can heat it up, you can slide it off, you can put a new piece on if you need. Um, the cotter key is going to be a wearing part, um, because as the washer rolls around, as the wheel rolls around, it will wear on the cotter key, so you do want to check that every so often and replace that as necessary. You don't want your wheel falling off. Um, that's uh, all there is to that. The next video I'll show you, I'll show how to put the wood fairings on. Uh, wood fairings go on really easy. There's a couple of tricks to make it easier to put those on. Till next time, happy building. Have fun out in your workshop.